Well, good evening. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our Ignite service for April 23rd. I'm so glad to have you here. It's a glorious day. For those of you that are watching online, thank you so much. It's always a blessing to have you join us. Be sure and give us a like or share, whatever you like to do there. And again, you're always welcome to come and join us here. But let's start the right way. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. God bless you and amen. Thank you so much. Again, there are prayer request cards in the back. There are on the tables. There are offering envelopes and there are tennis beds. So please fill those up. The uh, offering envelopes can go in the back, obviously, and the prayer request cards can go in the back also. Or be sure to offer those up when it's time as we do our prayer time. But let's fire it up the right way with the Ignite Music Team. <laughs>
Let's pray. Holy Creator, we come here tonight to worship you. Lord, help us to always lean into you in the good times and into the bad times. Lord, we know in those tough times that we can be held by you in those moments we don't think we can go on. So, Lord, let us keep the hope and remember there is always hope in you. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. to uh, cover a few announcements so as obviously the script is available here right after service or it's also available at church uh, b- between services and anytime during business hours 7 30 to 6 Monday through Thursday so again now's a great time graduations are coming up and Mother's Day is going to be coming up lots of reasons to purchase script and give that as gifts uh, circuit rider please keep track of your circuit rider there's so much going on in there to, uh, I know Lisa's going to toss a few things as we talk more about things that are coming up and as always, keep track of the table and the bulletin board in back is always updated with information. This week's community meal, this coming Wednesday, the community meal is the salad bar. 
And if you want more than just eating healthy, they also have pudding cups and cinnamon pull-apart bread. So I'll go with the pull-apart bread and everybody else can have the lettuce and salad, whatever they want to do. So, And takeout and drive through is available. So call by noon on Wednesday. Call the church office so we can tell Tracy how many meals to have ready to go. Also do want to point out that coming next Saturday, Saturday, April 29th, from 9 to 12, meet at the church parking lot. That's going to be the trustees' work day. Everyone is welcome to come. It's not just the trustees that have to do that. Everyone is welcome. So we'll be doing some landscaping and some cleanup and just, you know, beautifying the church. It's the beautiful buildings and facilities, so we want to keep those up. So feel free to come and join in. Bring rakes, bring shovels, bring gloves, bring whatever you like, and then uh, bring a friend. <laughs> it's a good way to get started with that. And then, Lisa, do you want to fill us in on the speaker coming up on April 30th? Oh, my gosh. We are so blessed. Rebecca Simon Peter is making a series of appearances throughout our conference, and we are blessed enough to be one of the sites that will house her live. She is an amazing speaker and motivator and just a ball of energy with a great story behind her of overcoming adversity and using your spiritual gifts for the good. And I'm really excited to have her. And that's going to be next Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Yes. In the fellowship. In fellowship. In the church. Okay. So mark that down for next Three Sunday. Five. I think it's three to five. I kept said we kept thinking two, three to five, but, but yeah. it may be three to five. Check your circuit writer. <laughs> <laughs> the safest way is to take your or call the church office as always to get that information. So again, a lot going on. I do want to point out that next Sunday, April thirtieth, and this started last August with discussions, and again in January. So next uh, thir the thirtieth next week is going to be the last. Ignite service. The music team is going to take a break. A much, 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 much deserved break that was planned before six now six and a half years, right? Six and a half years of hours after hours upon hours of prep time and rehearsal time and performing time, all to bless us with their talent. So a much deserved little break. So that will happen after the April thirtieth. So April thirtieth will be a good chance to come and again come and, and hear what a great job the music team does. But that will be the last night, just for a while as we go through some transition. So again, it's just a break as we take care of that. And of course, unfortunately at that time, we'll probably be giving a goodbye to uh, Clint who, and uh, Reverend Cindy, who will be doing their packing and moving. Actually, probably pretty well packed and moving, but well, packing that day, I guess. Moving, yeah, signing. Packing Thursday. Packing Thursday, <laughs> signing paperwork and everything else that comes up. So there's plenty going on. So. Again, that's as, our homeless days. <laughs> your homeless days. <laughs> so if you see a tent in the park somewhere, is that, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Just, just, just checking. Just want to be sure. Other we announcements. Down by the river. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Down by the river. So we got. It. Okay. Other announcements. Anything else that needs to come forward as far as announcements? It needs to be brought forward. Lisa. Um. Every year for like. I don't even know when it started, probably the year JW declared uh, the first Thursday in May to be the National Day of Prayer, there has been some sort of celebration or recognition here in Columbus. This year, from it's May 4th, we are praying for good weather because as happened last year, our sanctuary is the weather default place. <laughs> And this year it's going to be a little different. It's all day. I think the first, they broke up the days and hours. And the first hour um, is one of our area local churches. And then the second hour will be another one. And they're each just kind of doing their own thing. I know Emmanuel Lutheran and St. Anthony's are bringing children's choirs for their um, part of the day. Um, so for those of us who work, it's going to be hard to enjoy any of that, but FUMC is up from 5 to 6. We got the last slot of the day, and then right after us, the uh, Vertical Voices Praise Choir and band get on the stage and start running sound checks. So it's going to be a really, really neat event. Governor Pellin has agreed to come and give us a blessing and what have you. And, though I hate to look at it this way, even when we're able to 
bring new life into Ignite, it will be with that prayer report. So that might be the last time this group ever gets together, unless we decide to go on the road or something. <laughs> So the First United Methodist Church 956 will feature will the music feature. feed. So Easy. you will get a chance to hear them another time. So again, thank you, Lisa. Other announcements? Yes, Gordon. Well, next Sunday, Camp Rondell has an open house and dedication to the new Olson Monument to the poor. We've had a conflict with the church and stuff here, but uh, if somebody wants to go to that, that will be happening next Sunday also. Next Sunday, so a packed, the, the last day, of the, everything went to the last day of the month, right? <laughs> so next Sunday, then also in the afternoon, Camp Nell's dedication of the new Olson Lodge, which is beautiful, which is absolutely marvelous. So if you haven't been there, again, that's uh, that's from 2 to 4 right. next Sunday at Camp Nell. Okay, very good. Other announcements? How about joys and concerns? So some joys, obviously. I was noticing on Facebook that this was prom week, and as far as I know, we didn't have any major disasters coming through. So fortunately, hopefully all the kids had a great time and were healthy with that. Uh, district music contest was this week, and I know that the church had a number of youth that participated, and many of them pulled down superior ratings and, and did, did very, very well. So joys for our youth and, and the activities that they've got going on, plus uh, so much more yet before the year is out. Other joys or concerns that we can share? Lisa. Yesterday in Omaha, I went to one of my best friends from college's wedding. It's a second marriage for both her and her husband. And they have both faced an insurmountable lot of challenges and angst in their lives. So it was truly a joyous celebration that they found each other and that they were able to have this beautiful wedding even though the weather was not great. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. And when people are in their 50s, their reception ends like at 845. So you're all in bed at night. It's awesome. But I just, I hope everyone will join me in lifting them up because they so deserve it. So obviously, joy, joy uh, prayers of joy, and for best wishes as they move forward in their in their lives. Other joys or concerns? Yes, of course. Uh, Camp Mountain is extremely short of female counselors, uh, which is very unusual. It's usually flip flop with right. males. But uh, prayers that if you know anybody of that, of that college age uh, that's looking for a job this summer, uh, please send them. Okay. So we'll spread that word. And again, for those of you that are watching online, don't forget, you're included in this. So if you know of someone, again, uh, Camp on Nell could use counselors, always could use lots of counselors, but specifically female counselors this year. So again, if you know of someone, please guide them to the church office or to Gordon or wait up and get some information for you that way. So we'd love to have, because it's a great chance, a great opportunity. Uh, going to camp is just so much fun. Um, other things that we know that things have been going on, there's been violence around the world and there's been violent activities going on in riots here. We've had floods and tornadoes and damage. And so we know that people are suffering, suffering from all kinds of natural disasters, but things going on individually in their lives. And we know that uh, people that are having procedures done or surgery or maybe uh, in hospice care or whatever, uh, we want to keep all of those folks in our prayers too. And certainly we want to keep all of our first responders and firefighters and police in, in our prayers too, because they certainly do a lot for us. Other joys or concerns that we can bring forward? Yes? My dad's 96th birthday on the 25th. The 25th is, your, is Gordon's dad's 96th, 96th birthday. Wow, congratulations, happy birthday to your dad. We're trying to figure out if I'm going to make it to 96. <laughs> 66 now. I'm trying to think down the road. That is uh, that's that's quite an accomplishment. So congratulations to your dads. Anything else, Richard? Next Saturday, my sister will be celebrating her 25th wedding anniversary. Richard's sister will be celebrating her 25th wedding anniversary next Saturday. Next Saturday. Very it's good. Private party, so. Well, that's, that's fine. So we're not invited at this point. But. <laughs> okay. No, very good. All right. We're good with that. Okay. Let's, it's, it is what it is. That's, that's fine. That's all right. It is what it is. That's right. Well, let's take all of our joys and concerns to God. Lord God, 
Thank you for this glorious, wonderful day that you've given us. For as we gather here, we ask that you bless our time together and that all that we do and in all that we say and all that we think be done for your glory. Lord, we gratefully offer up our praises to you for the joys that were spoken here. Joys of birthdays, and anniversaries, of family time. Lord, we rejoice in the ability to freely gather and worship and praise you. And Lord, as much as we celebrate our joys of our youth and all the other activities, we come to you knowing that at times our hearts are heavy. Lord, and it's those times that our hearts, well, we begin to doubt. Help us to stay strong, Lord, knowing that you are with us. You're caring for us. You're comforting us for all the concerns that were brought before you and all those that were not spoken. Concerns for illnesses and injuries and surgeries and those who are away, those who are struggling, those who are hurting. And Lord, we also ask you to hear those prayers that linger in our hearts that went unspoken as we lift them up to you now. Lord, we thank and praise you knowing that you've heard our prayers and knowing that all things that are good and wonderful come through you. And in all things you are there for us, even when it feels like we're alone, that you are indeed the one true way for our salvation. Lord, we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from Acts in the fourth chapter, verses 32 to 35. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need. I got a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these holy words. Last week, we were preparing for this three-week period, and as we begin to get to next week, our last week, and I got to thinking that we needed to kind of have something to fall back on, especially on those Sundays, those few Sundays coming up when we won't be here to support each other as the apostles were able to do. And we're going to need to have some guideline. And so as we discussed last week, learning how to be a follower of Christ isn't just as easy as going, I'm a follower. It's not quite that simple. We discovered that, number one, we needed to live out the greatest commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor, love one another. Last week we looked at one way to be more like Jesus and how to love our neighbor. And we discovered that maybe the best way was to start with do no harm. We also realized that's really hard to do. Now that alone just by itself opened up a thousand questions, didn't it? What is actually doing harm? Jesus flipped tables and called people out. Was that doing harm? Pretty sure it made them uncomfortable. Probably hurt their little feelings. But did it do harm, or was it for their good? We know it was for their good because Jesus didn't do anything that was based on evil. It was always based on love. So John Wesley, as we said, said, doing harm by avoiding evil of every kind, especially doing what we know is not for the glory of God, is a pretty good guide for step one. Now step two, what's our next step? What's the next rule? This is our first of three rules. What's our next Simple rule. I'm not too sure about the whole simple part, to be real honest. But what's next? Well, if we do no harm, then the next one in line is probably do good. To do good. As Wesley says in the book of Discipline, and I took the information from the book of Discipline, and then another one called Three Simple Rules, as I gathered information and did some work. And Wesley says in the book of Discipline, doing good by being in every kind merciful after their power as they have the opportunity. Doing good of every possible sort and as far as possible to all. And then he mentions feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and visiting and being moral support to those in prison and those that are ill. And then he says to run the race set before us, denying ourselves and taking up our cross daily. Well, that seems like a good rule for doing good, but doing good as far as possible to all? It's hard enough now at times not to slap some people silly, isn't it? I mean, there's times, there's times when you should want to shake this stuffing out of some people. And I'm supposed to do good to them? Man, am I really supposed to do good to those that mock me, those that make fun of me, those that misuse my gifts? Those that return evil for good? Am I supposed to do good to those that I judge to be unworthy? Oops. Problem number one, right? Which means, of course, I just made myself godlike, didn't I? Doing good. You know what? That's going to be a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> doing good. Maybe I can just do a little good. I'll just do good to the people watching and the people here. I'll do good to the people I like and the people that are like, that like me and people that, where we are alike. That seems like an easy way to do it. Maybe I'll just start there. Maybe I can work my way up. Well, Reuben P. Jobs in his book, The Three Simple Rules, actually quoted Wesley when he was confronted with this. He says, 
Wesley, in answering the question, what does doing good look like in our divided and hostile and wounded world? Wesley was confronted with the same challenge, and Wesley found a, res a reasonable way to respond. This commandment is written in the heart, that he who loveth God love his brother also, and he accordingly loves his neighbor as himself. He loves every man as his own soul. His heart is full of love to all mankind, to every child of the Father of the spirits of the flesh, to all children of God. That a man that's not known to him is not a reason not to do good. That a man that he approves not of or that repays hatred for goodwill is not a reason not to do good. For he loves his enemies, yea, and the enemies of God, to them that hate him, yet he ceases not to pray for them. He ceases not to pray for them. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, 43 to 45, you know this one. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven who makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. Now I got to thinking, so we have some answers there, and so I decided to do a Google search. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about doing good? One site called openbible.info listed 100 different scriptures that talked about doing good. So let's read one. Uh, okay, let's read a few. <laughs> actually, I have, but it was interesting. But, so for example, because these are actually 100 different verses that come from, from Psalms to Proverbs to Jeremiah, from the Old Testament to the New, from the Gospels, all through the Epistles, the Letters, right through into Revelations. There are verses about doing good in Scriptures. For example, Mark 5. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works for which God prepared beforehand. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you receive the inheritance as your reward, as you serve the Lord. Hebrews 6.10, for God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints. Titus 3.8, the saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. And just one more Proverbs, just so we can go through all of them. Do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Doing good. Not just intending to, but actually doing good. I wonder how many folks say, well, I meant to do it. I was going to do something good. I was going to donate. I was going to put in some time. I was going to go visit the sick. I was going to try real hard to be nice to that neighbor of mine. But you know what? What's the expression? The highway to hell is paved with good intention. Which brings up a question I want to throw in here. It doesn't basically fit, but why is there a highway to hell but a staircase to heaven? Is that like anticipated traffic flow? <laughs> There's a highway one way and just a staircase the other way? I don't know, but I digress. Doing good is about doing good because we can. But keep in mind, doing good is not about judging who gets it and how much. The desire or need to do good should be based upon, the, or not based upon the reactions or thoughts or deeds of others. We shouldn't care for the anticipated response. Nor should we do good deeds with eyes that look around and go, well, what can I get out of this? Will I get pats on the back? Will I be recognized? What kind of earthly rewards can I get? Because if we do good deeds for earthly rewards, you know what you get? Earthly rewards. Doing good should always be done with the desire to follow Jesus' call to be a disciple with eyes on Jesus first. And neither do we have the right to say that our deeds are better than others. Sometimes you go, look at all I've done. Or so and so over there, he doesn't do anything. He never helps anybody. We don't know that. We're not here to judge someone else's deeds, nor are we to put that first. We are not to worry about others' things. 
You remember the woman at the well. She gave what she could. She wasn't worried about what all the big leaders, Jewish leaders were doing, complaining and making fun of her. She did what she could with what she had. Simply doing what we can, where we can, when we can, with what we have, is all God asks of us. And you know what? When you're doing good and if other people don't like it, tough cookies. Do good because it's the thing to do. But that brought up a question for me. Okay, do good to all. All the time. How much good is good enough? Where can I stop? Is there a place where I can stop doing good? Again, individual questions we have to answer. Do I have to go into absolute, total self-denial? Is that what it takes to be recognized by God for doing good? Of course not. Does God expect us to give so much that we suffer? Our families and jobs and those closest to us suffer? Are we expected to give so much to the needy that ultimately we become the needy? No, God's not asking for that. Again, it's to do what we can with what we have. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied his faith. And worse than an unbeliever. Ephesians 2.10, we used this before, we are God's workmanship. Psalm 139.14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Does, that, does you really think if we can say that and the scripture tells us that God wants us to suffer? Of course not. I don't think anywhere in the Bible, and help me if I'm wrong, but is there some place in the Bible where it says give till it hurts? Is there some place in the Bible that it says no pain, no gain? I don't think so. God doesn't ask us to do that. God asks you to give what you can. But the other thing that's clear in our scriptures is this. We're not doing good because we have to. We don't do good to be saved. That can't happen. We cannot buy our way to heaven. We don't do good because we're saved. We do good because, excuse me, we don't do good to be saved. We do good because we are saved. We don't do good deeds because we have to, but because we want to. We don't do good deeds to show off and be better than someone else. We do good deeds to better someone else. That's what God asks us to do. And that lets us lead a life as close to God as possible. Salvation is a gift of grace. We can't earn it. The things go wrong. Doing more good, is there a scale somewhere that says we'll put more good on this side because you've tilled it a little this week? Do we have to measure our good or do we just do good because we can? When we do no harm, we do no harm because we do not want to do harm because we want to be like Christ. And when we do good, we do good because we love and want to love others and let others feel and see and experience God's love through us. You know, I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, there are probably those folks out there that think, you know, that hash character sure doesn't do much. He doesn't donate, he doesn't donate here, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. We all have those, people have opinions. And my first thought is, as I said, I don't care what other people think. Because you know what my goal is? My goal is that when that time comes and those people are walking by, looking at me. Whatever they may say doesn't matter because I'm looking to hear among the sweetest words that will ever be spoken. And may these be the words we all look forward to hearing. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Hmm. Doing good. Maybe not as hard as I thought. Amen. As I call the music team up, uh, again, just a reminder, next week uh, we'll finish up our third rule, which is stay in love with God. So, we again, we would love to have you come for that. But certainly come as we begin, as we take our little break next week afterwards. So come and, and get to experience the Ignite Music Team one more time live. <clears throat> Remember how you 
Again, thank you so much for coming. For those of you that are here, thank you. For those of you that are watching online, again, thank you for joining us. Again, give us a, a share or a like. Again, the script, one of the scriptures is, for what you have done to the least of these, you have done for me. Whether it's do no harm or doing good, we do those things because of Jesus. And guess what? Jesus will give you the strength to do them. So now as we carry forward, let God strengthen you and bless you and carry you forward in your week as you continue to do good in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.